Hi, I'm Chris, I like to paint things, and this month it's Orktober. Today, I received a very special package from a website called Gear Guts Mech Shop. We've got two nice resin prints in here, and we're gonna build and paint one of them. I got these on special during the Hot Git Summer event, and I'm sure they're doing something for October too. Though, I'll be honest, I have not checked since. We've got all our pieces in a row, and we're gonna stack them up just to uh, get a good idea of how it's gonna look. GearGuts website has hundreds of awesome orky models including bruisers and cruisers and walkers and this guy that we're going to paint and build today. The first step to resin minis is to give them a nice soak in a bath of warm soapy water Scrub them with a toothbrush to get all that mold release on and let them dry. Then we have to clean up all of the supports used when they printed the thing, which is a process. And don't forget to make time for your cat in between. Now that everything's been prepped, it's time to assemble. I cut in some lines on all of the major joints so that the Gorilla Glue has some cracks to soak into. And then I dab each joint with a little bit of water and spread some clear Gorilla Glue over everything. Now like everybody who has a bottle of Gorilla Glue, my lid is just glued shut, so I just use a toothpick, it's not really a big problem. But I did use super glue for some of the, for some of the areas that needed a bit less, um, you know, solid of a bond. We dry fit the backpack, make sure that's gonna work, and then we're left with our three major pieces. Now after the glue's dried, there's gonna be a lot of um, nasty residue that we wanna cover up and clean up. So we're gonna break into our big horde of orky bits and find a couple of uh, mechanical pieces, which I think is actually from a Mechanicus kit. We're gonna clean all of those Gorilla Glue overflows, kinda add on some cool pipes and cover up all of our laziness, we're gonna put it that way. But now we have a proper looking mech ready for painting. Before we can put any paint on this guy, we gotta build him a base. So I have this old Dungeons and Dragons Wiz Kids uh, base, I think, and some rocks and some uh, orc scrap and some small uh, cork board that we're gonna tear into more natural looking patterns. We're gonna put our orc in my orc setting, which is just a gray, nasty wasteland full of scorched earth and big jagged rocks and angry green men. We're gonna use our legs to kind of test the fitting and put everything in place just using super glue to put it all down we're going to cover it up in a minute i've used this mixture for my texture paste in my last video and for a while now it involves mixing some craft paint white elmer's glue baking soda sand and stirring that up, adding a little bit of water to thin it down if need be, so we get this sort of soupy, gloopy consistency, spread it all over the model. 
the water, glue, baking soda all react to sort of make it rock hard and allow you to fill in all the uh, spaces. I did do two coats of this and each one did need like 24 hours to dry. Alright, base coating time. I stuck both halves of the mech onto uh, some sticks using some blue tack, took them outside and gave them two blasts with Rust-Oleum 2 coat and uh, a pretty decent finish but black spray paint sometimes kind of tips off I'm going to be handling it with my hands so I gave them a all over of a really thin down layer of Army Painter uh, matte black. Thinned it down so that we don't clog any detail. All we're doing is holding in the paint and touching up all the places that that black primer might not have got to. Then we bring on the mother of all dry brushes for an all over metal dry brush with three different colors. All right, now we're gonna grab a proper brush and black out a few of the places we wanted to actually be the color black, like the main uh, body of our big old mech, a few places on the arms, a few spots here and there. That also helps break up a lot of that, you know, metal monotony. Now we uh, open our terribly potted thing of Citadel Corn Red that has just gone so bad. These pots, man, don't even get me started. I use a rubber band and thin them. Either way, we're gonna glaze red. Very similarly, if you didn't watch my last video on some Zorn Palette cultists, we're gonna do a glaze of red, starting from corn red, working our way all the way up through Wazdaka red. Just nice, thin coats going in the same direction, letting it dry in between. I don't even know if this is how you're supposed to glaze, but this is how I glaze, and it's been working thus far, so that's fine. After Wazdaka Red, we go to Pure Red from the Army Painter, which is a super vibrant red. We go very light on it, just touching like the top, maybe the top third. And after that's dry, then we do a full uh, edge highlight using this red. The contrast is kind of, to me, what seals the gradients. And then going all the way around, we do just sprinkles of demonic yellow or any you know super bright yellow in just the corners to get a good ketchup mustard effect but I don't know if there's the right way to do it but I've been digging the results I got thus far Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. Next, we're gonna do all of our metallics, uh, brushed on metallics, that is. We're gonna do some Army Painter metals, our Plate Man metal, doing all of the rivets. Even the smaller rivets, just for some added contrast with the, uh, the base coat. And just, you know, here and there where I think it will look nice, could use like a proper solid coat. Then our greedy gold is gonna go on all of the exhaust pipes. And there are a lot on any Orky mech. Finally, we use the rough iron to sort of break up the stark change from the gold to the silver. Just, you know, dotting it here and there, adding some, you know, differentiation in different parts, breaking things up, making it not just one big piece of silver metal, you know, going over with all of our different metals.
And as you can tell by my coffee cooling in real time, this took ages. So first we're going to highlight up all of our black areas. To do that we use Dark Reaper up into Thunderhawk Blue and then give it a white smidge on the edge. The Dark Reaper has really good contrast over black is the main reason I use it here first. Give it a nice solid thick highlight over everything. Then with that down, Thunderhawk Blue has a place to stick to. We go with a slightly lighter, if we can help it highlight on that, over the exact same space. Then we do our leather white in the corners, just to kind of create a gradient. And then I will come back and do one more full dot of pure leather white to really sell the shine. Then we get to do the fun part. We have to do this on the entire model, which there isn't that much black. It's not the end of the world. I tried to first, I tried to do a proper armor sheen on the black. It came out right. I'm not, you know, displeased with it. Um, it's a good thing to try out, so we'll take it from there. Next, we're going to put down some paint like we were orcs. We're going to put it all over the places that the orcs might have painted themselves. For example, all of the claws on the mech's arms, on all the skulls that they put around. All of these missiles are going to get their own individual little paint jobs. But we got to start with white as a base for any other color we want to replace over that anyway. And once again, make time for this little monster. Now with the cat quite literally off of our back, we're going to give our white paints a, uh, a black wash of Nuln Oil just to add some contrast because everything else on this guy has contrast except these white parts. And then we're going to try and do our lenses. Emphasis on try. My plan here is to make increasingly darker glazes of a black into the top right corner, transitioning from white, and then glaze over it. So we go from gray to, you know, dark gray all the way up to black, and then we're gonna put a tiny little dot in the top right corner. This should hopefully simulate a lens effect. Then we pop a glaze of uh, Citadel's yellow contrast paint on there. I don't typically use contrast paint, and as you can see, this is probably why. Ooh, yeah, that, that doesn't look great. Let's try that again. Not, not too bad, right? After you go over it, do all the detail work around it. This guy's really coming together. I mean, you could call this guy finished. You could have called him finished a hot minute ago, but you can call him finished. They gave him fun designs on all of his missiles. He's got some depth everywhere. And, I mean, it's only been a couple hours of painting. We're gonna use a matte varnish to seal everything in and keep everything sort of one sheen of color. Now, before we can put our machine to battle, we gotta make a base for him made sure that everything on this is as dry as possible and give a quick base coat with some brush on primer to uh, the one piece of proper plastic. I also base coated a couple rocks black just to um, start breaking up. What we're going to do is we're going to put in a bunch of different colors on the base then we're going to layer over everything. So we do some brown rocks, some black rocks, even use the brown to make a little path that's going to run straight through. 
This was super enjoyable, actually. I just kind of went with it with the base. I figured I could cover it in even blue. Why not, right? And just and just let color kind of run wild because we're going to cover everything up later with washes and dry brushing. So we make a little definition now, a little pop of color. Everything looks a little more natural. Everything looks a little more interesting. So the first dry brush we're going to do is over these initial colors, and that is just to kind of blend them all together before. Plus, it definitely broke off a lot of the nasty pieces. It obviously still does not look anything like real uh, rocks, but we're just going to create layers and layers of depth on the, the top surfaces of this. We're also going to get a base coat on the colors for our orky flag and purple, because that's normally the color of my orcs, but lately I've just been feeling red. Red and black orcs. Red and black orcs all day. Now I made up a really nasty wash of some dark umber, water, a drop of black, and a drop of dish soap. Definitely went a little heavy on the water, but honestly, not, not, not a huge problem. It kept everything still kind of vibrant, which contrasts well, I'm hoping, with the all over black uh, mech. But this first wash is going to seep in all the recesses, then we're going to break it up a little by grabbing some null oil and spot stamping down black and shadow, and honestly not even shadow, just breaking up the color, making it more interesting, making it more look like earth. And obviously you got to coat all of the black and purples in that, I mean we're going ham, we're literally just splodging it all over. Just kind of being free with it, honestly. Who cares? It's a base. It doesn't need to be perfect. After that dried for like 10 minutes, I gave it an all-over dry brush again with the same mummy robes color. This kind of tied all of the colors back together. Did some quick, quick highlights on our sign. Now it kind of looks like earth. Everything is dry. We're going to dab some water on it. Dab some water on the feet of our mech and stick that bad boy down in place. Next, I want to secure the two parts of this orc properly, so I stuck some Gorilla Glue on a toothpick into the top, and then did the same thing with a little hole that's in the bottom. Lucky for me, these holes were already there. Did not have to do any drilling, gluing, anything. Now do you see a problem? Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that later. And I will come back to that, I mean we're going to forget about it, take all of our glamour shots. So. I used a bunch of things to prop up our mech, keep him in place, and let him dry totally overnight. The last thing is put down a bunch of tufts here, and here, and maybe even one there, to tie it in with the rest of my orc army. And with that, we were left with this. Yeah, I know, there's still a popsicle stick sticking out of his face, sue me. Um, if you liked what you saw, let me know. Uh, subscribe, all that good nonsense. I plan on making more of these, so let me know if you like them, if you hate them, what's wrong with them. Either way, um, I'm Chris. Again, I like to paint things, and have a great night.